Hello again, I'm Stephen Cook with Cook Saw Manufacturing. We've been doing some uh, bandsaw basics uh, dealing with uh, resaws and sawmills, especially in the, the larger wood, uh, more than just the shop bandsaws, but larger wood cutting of, of logs and, and big cans for pallet mills and what have you. Uh, but this video I'm going to talk about specifically about just the body of the blade or, or really what the bandsaw blade is uh, made of and some things uh, that are interesting at least about it and things that people would like to know. To, to begin with this, this metal, and I mentioned this in one of the shorter videos, and this will be a, a little bit longer video, it is made of spring steel. It springs back and forth. It's going around a wheel over here. If it's a horizontal wheel, vertical, I guess, if it's up here and, and down here. But it's springing, and every time it goes around a wheel, this thing is springing. So it's very important uh, to have that spring action. So this, this material is really made out of the same type of uh, material as a spring uh, is made of. It's got a higher carbon content than just a regular mild steel, and that's what allows it when it is uh, put through a heating and tempering process uh, to, to become spring-like. Uh, also the carbon in it is uh, what allows uh, it to be hardened of itself, but also is what allows these teeth to become harder. Uh, again, that's a heating and tempering process and the proprietary stuff that different manufacturers have uh, from the strip steel manufacturer all the way up to the uh, bandsaw blade manufacturer themselves. Uh, but th that, is, that is very important in, in how uh, you uh, get this steel to react as it should. Uh, another thing about the body of the blade that uh, Tim Cook, my brother, uh, has, has taught many, many people and we found is very important is as this spring steel curves around the wheel, it actually develops what's called anti curvature. And uh, that is something that is very interesting. And as this thing curves around, you can take, often he'll talk about taking like a, a razor blade off of a box cutter or something, just something that's got a real straight edge. And you can bend this and look, and I'm not going to be able to exactly show you uh, here, but if you lay that, if you bend that and looked right there, there is actually a dip in the blade here. And that's called anti-clastic. Instead of normally you would think as this curves around that it would curve more like this, it actually curves the other way. So there's a little bit of uh, a light and I can see that when I put this little straight edge on there. That's, that's what is called anti-clastic curvature. We didn't make that name up by the way. We found it in some literature from many, many years ago. What happens then in the body of this blade as you go around these band wheels and you're, you're straight, you're in the straight and around the band wheel, straight and around the band wheel, and you're doing that up here and down here. And we're running at about 5,500 feet per minute, sometime a little slower. We don't like to go a lot faster than that. That might be something we'll talk about in another video. But uh, as it does that, well, you can see this thing is developing a curvature because it is bending uh, not just round, but also it's cupping as it goes around. And as it does that many hundreds and thousands of times, it begins to hold that. Even though this is spring steel, it begins to hold that curvature. That's why we sell a, a band blade roller and have popularized that. And if you want to really saw at the peak productions, uh, you need a roller, you need a way to do that. And most people uh, in years past have thought, well, that's only for your wider bands, four inches and up or six inches and wider. Uh, they make 12 inch blades wide for these big, uh, big mills. But we have found that that's very important even in our small mills because what happens once you develop this curvature and you're in the cut and, and, uh, and you're cutting along, if this thing has developed a curve like this, then it's going to try to dive off, going to try to dive off. But with our band roller, you can roll this and flatten it back out. You can even put a little cup upward. With roller guides, again, that can be another video as well, but with roller guides as we have, on the top side, that causes this blade to stay up against the roller guide and we can then control it by having just, we call it a crack of light, just a little bit when you, when you lay a straight edge on there and measure it in the flat. We want just a little crack of light there, flat to just a little crack. And so, but over time, as, as we try to get longer life out of our blades, it develops these curvatures. And, uh, and it will eventually, I don't care how much you sharpen and, and set it, things we'll talk about, things that are very critical and important have to be done, um, it will develop that. 
The more life you get out of the blade, the more you will begin and even continue to develop uh, this curvature. 